would like to call to order the public hearing of the Board of Trustees of the Batavia Public Library District for November 18th. Uh, can we call over the roll, please? Sure. Uh, McGuire Popic. Here. Blodgett. Here. Deachman. Here. Von Lunen. Here. Jack Brosky. Here. Sullivan. Here. Schuster. Here. Okay. And our only item for our public hearing is the ordinance levying taxes for fiscal year 2014-15. So, uh, do, for the record, do I, should I uh, read this? Okay. Okay, so we have before us uh, an ordinance uh, for tonight's public hearing and uh, this is ordinance 2014-010. Uh, section one, this is a public hearing on the proposed property tax increase for the Batavia Public Library District for 2014, the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2014, and ending June 30th, 2015. Sorry, July 1, 2014, and ending June 30th, 2015. Section two, pursuant to the Truth and Taxation Act, the Board of Library Trustees adopted a resolution determining the amount of money estimated to be necessary to be raised by the tax levy at its regular meeting on Tuesday, October 21, 2014. Section three, in accordance with Illinois statutes, the library district published a black bordered Notice of Proposed Property Tax Increase for the Batavia Public Library District. On Thursday, November 6, this notice was published in the Kane County Chronicle. Section four, that the corporate and special purpose property taxes extended or abated for 2013 were $3,269,220.34. The proposed corporate and special purpose taxes to be levied for 2014 are $3,728,500, which represents a 14.0486% increase over the previous year. Section 5, that the property taxes extended or abated for debt service and public building commission leases for 2013 were $719,527 and 47 cents. The estimated property taxes to be levied for debt service and public building commission leases for 2014 are 715,500, which represents a decrease of 0.5597% from the previous year. Section six, <laughs> that the total property taxes extended or abated for 2013 were $3,988,747.81. The estimated total property taxes to be levied for 2014 are $4,444,000, which represents an 11.4134% increase over the previous year. Section seven, in the public published notice, persons desiring to appear at the public hearing and present testimony to the taxing district were requested to contact the library director. Three persons contacted the library director to request more information on or to discuss the proposed property tax increase. If there is any person who desires to pre present testimony to this taxing district represented by this board of library trustees, please step forward at this time. And uh, looks like we, we have only one person signed in, so I'll call on this gentleman first, and then others can, uh, can follow. So first we have Carl Dinwiddie. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. I don't know whether I would characterize this as a testimony, but I would just a little short. Uh, you might call it a macro and a micro view of the library. First of all, maybe the macro view. Um, in America, probably our best defense against tyranny and uh, overreaching government is uh, an educated and uh, informed populace, and the library certainly uh, does that function. Uh, I know you have a lot of traffic here, and that's a good thing. Um, secondarily, probably as a taxpayer, 
we've said this and I've said this to a number of your librarians as I'm doing business here that in America the libraries are probably the best value for our tax dollar any of us get in America and I believe that's true on a micro view now I want you all to hear this as a user uh, whenever I go back to the reference desk or go downstairs uh, and I don't want to forget anybody or even up here everybody is very helpful very informative very courteous that I've run into and since the library's been here uh, I don't want to forget the friends of the library I think they do a great job and um, this may sound a little funny, but this is an issue. The bathrooms are always clean, too, whenever I come here. So what I guess the short is saying, you're doing a good job. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Sheets. He, um, one of my neighbors uh, up where I live, over on the east side, she contacted him and needed better clarification about what this uh, hearing was about and the uh, increase in taxes. And he was very responsive. Uh, not only in writing but he met with her and very helpful um, I'm trying to think what Joe Yagel the head of finance from the school board used to always say he used to say school finances are very confusing and hard <coughs> to understand and in Illinois anything having to do with money and levies and all that's very confusing and hard to understand so I thank Mr. Sheets for that and I don't have any other comments uh, for your hearing it's just it's all you know I've had a very positive experience with the uh, with the Batavia library system thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you. appreciate your kind words okay uh, would anyone else like to present any testimony this evening okay all right, well, with that, we can uh, entertain a motion to adjourn our public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Von Lunen and second by Jakubowski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our public hearing is adjourned. Thank you uh, for attending and for providing testimony. I would now like to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Batavia Library District for November 18, 2014. Uh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A roll call, please. Okay. McGuire Poppick. Here. Fawcett. Here. Beachman. Here. Von Luden. Here. Beck Chekmoski. Here. Sullivan. Here. Schuster. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. And item four is comments from the audience. So, uh, would any member of the audience like to uh, offer any comments to our board this evening? Okay. Moving on to item five is our consent agenda, which consists of uh, five items this evening. One, uh, 5A1 is uh, minutes from October 21. 5B1 is expenditures from 2014. 5C1 is the ordinance levying taxes for fiscal year 2014-15, which we just held our public hearing about. 5C2 is windmill service, 5C3 is snow removal services, and 5C4 is the biannual review of closed sessions. Would, uh, would any trustee like to remove any of these items for a separate vote? Okay. Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve it. Okay. Second. Moved by Blodgett and second by McGuire Popic. Any discussion? I do have one question about the, the snow removal services, if I could. Is, and it appears that we changed the way that we're paying for, for that service from private, previous years. Is that true? Um, how do you mean? Well, with the, 
uh, incremental. different prices for different events, if you will, different levels of snowfall? Oh, no, we're, we're recommending one uh, contractor, but the way we've evaluated each year is to take the prices that are submitted. And uh, <clears throat> because different uh, contractors will quote prices based on different numbers of inches, we created uh, multiple scenarios, uh, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, and six and a half inches, and we plug in the contractor's numbers for snow removal on the lot and sidewalks and salting on lot and sidewalks for each of those scenarios to determine who is actually the lowest overall uh, for, the, for, the incident, for the snow incident. And we've been doing that since uh, 2010 at least, I think. So. Okay. Yeah. So our methodology is the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do we predict any change in in price overall? Obviously dependent on weather, but right. no. The uh, the uh, low um, uh, proposal from uh, Silco Solutions here in Batavia, uh, their prices actually stayed the same. Okay. Sure. We yeah. have a, a couple of the other mm -hmm. vendors are getting closer. Uh, their prices have been dropping, but they haven't quite dropped far enough to unseat Silco Solutions yet. So, okay. So, uh, depending on, of course, it's all dependent on how much snow we get. Right. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're ready for a roll call on, on the consent agenda then. All right. The Board of Popek? Aye. Blodgett? Aye. Beachman? Aye. Von Lunen? Aye. Jakubowski? Aye. Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Schuster? Aye. <coughs> okay. Item six is approving tonight's agenda. Are there any changes requested? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Please so move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay, our agenda is approved. Okay, so item seven is financial reports. In Joy's absence, so George, would you like to highlight anything from no, I discussed. Uh, in our packet. Uh, I discussed the monthly reports with her um, during the day, and there's really sort of business as usual. There was nothing unusual. Uh, she did file our audit with the state of the fire by law. Okay. And, uh, with, and uh, there's a mm -hmm. comptroller's report that we're required to file. The auditors to file the comptroller's report. So we're all up to date on our um, legal requirements. Otherwise. Uh, no unusual expenditures. George, was, did we receive any uh, communication from our uh, investment with the state? Uh, and I saw in the paper there was uh, some fraud in the uh, in the system, and there was some of the municipalities and the library districts and other places got hit with uh, a huge amount, which was spread over a lot of it. But, uh, we. We got no notification that we were affected by any Oh, good. Completion. No news is good news. I suppose in this case right. it is. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anything else for George? All right. Item eight is the president's report. And I did uh, attend the Mayor Schilke's State of the City address. I guess that was last week, hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. So it was uh, good to good to hear Mayor Schilke say some some good things about the um, the library and, and what we do here. So I was I was happy to attend that event, uh, and I also know we have a an event coming up uh, the, in what 10, 10, 12 days or so. The the tree lighting ceremony. Um, where members of, of uh, the community uh, are, you know, reading books to, to children. So, Joanne, if you're looking for volunteers, I'd be happy to, to participate this year. So, uh, you can get, get in touch with me uh, about that. Okay, and item nine is good news or comments from the board. Would anyone like to, Tom? Uh, Doug, I attended the uh, New Lyceum series. Uh, all about paper, and it was very interesting. And uh, Francine was there. It was a very good presentation. Very knowledgeable man, and 
he said some very good things about our library. Okay. And he's very complimentary. Uh, said he does a lot of uh, traveling around and visits a lot of libraries in his course of his job. And he said that we have, we should be proud of the, our library here. Okay, and that's good to hear. Thank you. And I think we should be proud of our staff for selecting uh, such a notable right. gentleman, an author to uh, and researcher to to come into our town and talk about the history of paper, which thankfully is not going away. <laughs> the post office will be happy to hear that, and so are our every, so is every library out there. <laughs> um, but he, he was extremely knowledgeable, and he could have he could have been here for three hours easily. Three days, three days easily, yeah. and I'm sure he was here for quite a while afterwards, signing books and things like that. He, uh, Barnes and Noble provides the service uh, to bring in the books for him to sign, and uh, uh, they said that was a I don't they didn't give me an exact number, but they said it was more books uh, above average the number of books that are sold after. Oh, that, yeah. so. A lot of books were sold, I guess. So you seem very happy to sign them. So. My decision to skip choir practice and come here instead was worthwhile. <laughs> Diane, don't say anything. I okay. Love it. <laughs> so you did a plug in for the church, though. That's right. I did get a plug in. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay. Item 10 is correspondence and communication. We had a couple things in our packet here. George, any, anything you want to point out for us? Uh, just a uh, thank you letter for uh, the, my presentation at ILA this year. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, the description of the program was on the back. It was all about the Freedom of Information Act, so uh, 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 a topic of interest among uh, all governmental bodies, and we had a pretty good turnout for that, for that speech. And, and a piece the Chamber did on me, so that's George and I in the packet to me. <laughs> and then a uh, uh, nice article that the Batavia, uh, that the King County Chronicle did on the Batavia Republican. Were you going to talk about this, Stacey? Or? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, a project that we uh, began in, in collaboration <coughs> with the Batavia Depot Museum last year uh, was to uh, microfilm and digitize uh, issues of the Batavia Republican, starting with uh, volume one, number one, which I think was... Uh, June 1990, is that, am I correct in that? Yes. About that? June 14th, 1990. June 14th, that's yeah. even better, okay. <laughs> uh, we've, we've done the first uh, year and a half of the Republican. The, uh, Shaw Media, which bought the Republican, uh, decided it didn't have storage space for the, for the uh, bound issues they had. <clears throat> and this paper had never been microfilmed and so isn't available uh, for re researchers and local historians. And so they uh, loaned uh, a 10 years worth to the Batavia Depot Museum, which also didn't have space to store it. So we offered some of our space downstairs with the, with the other newspapers we had there and began a project using um, per capita grant money from the Illinois State Library <coughs> to do this project. And so the first year and a half is now available online. It's searchable which is really exciting. You can actually put in any keyword, and uh, the website is uh, www.bataviahistory.org, and uh, there's a lot of local history there, but uh, we uh, plan to continue doing this uh, about a, a year at a time, maybe, or so, uh, as funds are available through our state grant, and uh, very exciting for us, and uh, able to both preserve and make available to the public. Uh, and so the Kane County Chronicle and Shaw Media were, uh, gave explicit permission for us to put it online and we're very excited about the fact that we are in fact doing this. So they did an article in the, in the paper on November 8th. So I think that's worth highlighting. It's a nice Absolutely. project for us. So. Okay, cool. So that's the correspondence. All right, thank you. <coughs> All right, item 11 is directors and librarians reports. We have a memo here, a couple of memos in our packet. George, would you like to highlight anything from, from this? Well, uh, several things, a lot of nuts and bolts kind of things in here this time, but uh, we are uh, uh, participating in the Batavia Access Toy Store again this year for the ninth consecutive year. We're a drop-off site 
for the toy collections locally, and so we're excited to do that. And we'll be accepting donations for that through Saturday, December 13th. And um, we also, I put in here uh, that uh, the task of cleaning and polishing DVD and CD discs, which, which uh, significantly extends their lifespan, has been moved from technical services downstairs to circulation services upstairs. And uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, I realized after the fact that when I say provide a faster turnaround time, it may sound like technical services wasn't doing a very good job, but it, that, is, that actually wasn't the case. Um, circulation services requested moving that uh, work upstairs because um, uh, it fits well into their workflow and <clears throat> they uh, uh, saw nothing wrong with what technical services was doing. So I want to uh -huh. emphasize that uh, um, technical services actually initiated the service, which has saved us a lot of money over the years. and. Uh, uh, Circulation services just can fit this into their workflow a little more easily than they can downstairs. And I didn't want to leave a lingering impression that there was anything wrong with what was happening before because okay. there, there certainly wasn't. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, it's a great little machine we've got that cleans and polishes these things. And uh, we'll sometimes get DVDs that don't play at all, and we can run through this machine and they work like they're brand new. It's a it's an amazing. Uh, Amazing process. Um, Doug mentioned uh, the uh, story time at the Festival of Lights, or I should say Celebration of Lights. Uh, that's on Sunday, November 30th. Uh, from, it starts at 6.15, and Joanne may be saying more about that. Uh, so we're always excited to participate in that. We've been doing that for a long time. I have no idea how long a time, but for many, many, many years. And. Um, and we rank pretty well in the Library Journal Index, which is uh, uh, basically ranks libraries across the United States based on four uh, per capita type service uh, output measures, uh, library visits, circulation, program attendance, and public internet computer use. And uh, while we haven't quite hit the starred library level uh, yet in our, in our uh, budget category, uh, we're ranked 12th in the state of Illinois in our budget category out of 121 libraries and 94th in the United States in our budget category, which I think is pretty good for a mm -hmm. town of 26,000 people in, the, in a library our size. So uh, as you know, we get a lot of traffic. Uh, it averages anywhere from 900 to 1,000 people a day through the building, and we do a lot of business. And uh, that is certainly reflected in, in this kind of ranking. So we're very proud of that. That's my report. If there are any more questions, I'll turn it over to Joanne and Stacy. Okay. Joanne, welcome. Thank you. I will start with some pictures. I know those are always fun to send around. Um, and the f things featured on my little picture poster this uh, week um, are from three events that we've had already at the beginning of this month. Our preschool fair, which was the first Monday of the month, we had over 100 people participating in that and coming um, to talk to uh, Geneva and Batavia preschools uh, staff, and that was very well received. Our late night after hours was this past Friday, and we had 50 children, third to fifth grade, participating in that, and that was, as always, a very fun and well-received <coughs> evening. And then this past Sunday, we had a program on frogs, and it was all about frogs. And the lady had a, the frog lady, as she likes to be known, uh, brought a lot of frogs. And in fact, I understand one got out in the parking lot that she had to trace down before uh, the program started. But all was well, and he was captured again, and, and everyone at the program really enjoyed that. Um, George commented about uh, some groups who appreciate and uh, using uh, meeting here and using our facilities. Uh, Jolene Baytech hosted a Rails group. She is involved with the special needs and inclusion, um, uh, inclusion activities for library services to the special needs population children. And she hosted the Rails meeting, a Rails uh, meeting here this past week. And there were over 30 staff members um, from libraries as far south as Joliet and as far north as Skokie 
who came out and it was a full day program. The morning was a presentation um, by, by several people, including Jolene, on some of the services and materials that we provide for special needs children, um, as well as uh, um, a doctoral student from Australia who was bringing information about what they're doing on, with, uh, regarding special needs in Australian libraries and um, the afternoon programming on special uh, programs for special needs students. And the um, remarks I stopped into the program a few times were very positive. Even though people had to trek a ways to get out here, um, they really appreciated our facility. They thought it was a great spot for their uh, meeting. We had great uh, they loved the room, they loved the atmosphere, they loved the Batavia community, and Jolene did a wonderful job hosting and showed a lot of the materials that we're providing, and they were very excited to hear about some of those materials and our inclusion game night, which Christine Edison um, is hosting uh, for high school and young adult um, special needs students. So it was a great meeting, and uh, Jolene got a lot of very positive feedback from that. How far away did people come, Jolene? Uh, as far south as Joliet and as far north as Skokie. So it was quite a, quite a group. Uh, yes, we are hosting Celebration of Lights, the reading, and Doug, I have your name down. Uh, and it is November 30th. Uh, in December, we've decided to do a little fun theme. It's all about gingerbread, so there'll be a number of variety of activities happening during the month of December that feature gingerbread in it. And I also wanted to mention, I don't have the list of books tonight, I haven't gotten it from Kimberly yet, but Barnes & Noble Booksellers in Geneva Commons um, annually does a holiday book fair, a holiday book drive. And for the last number of years, they have featured, some of the titles they have featured have benefited our Born to Read program. So they are once again doing that for us this year. Um, and what it is, is if you're making a purchase or if you just go into that Barnes & Noble, it has to be the Geneva Commons one, uh, you have the opportunity to purchase a book and that is donated then to, and it's, there's a, several organizations, Fox Valley Literacy is one of them, but our Born to Read books will be included that as well. And we'll have those titles, those specific titles, up on our website so that you would see, can see what the um, titles will be. Uh, but we appreciate Barnes & Noble doing that. We generally, generally get over 100 titles from them, which at four <coughs> to six dollars a book, you know, saves Born to, the Born to Read program quite a bit of money every year. So we are appreciative of that. So if you find yourself shopping, you can do that. And that's all I have, unless okay. there are any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stacy, welcome. Thanks. I have just a couple items I'd like to mention. Um, November is National Novel Writing Month. And this year, Christine Edison um, set up our first NaNoWriMo, which is the short version of saying National Novel Writing Month event, which was held on November 1st as a kickoff event and was so well received. Um, the people who attended said they plan to participate again next year and are hoping that we can do even more events. So um, she has that on her agenda for next year already. Um, another um, program item that's coming up very soon, Monday, ne Monday December 1st at 7 o'clock, um, we have the second program in our new Questions and Ancestors series and it's going to focus on Chicago genealogy. So for people who have roots in the Chicago area, um, it's a great opportunity to learn about some of the special ways that you can dig into the, those big city records that can sometimes be more challenging than investigating a rural area. And one bit of really nice news, um, Roseanne Freund, who does the selection for our audiobooks, filled out a survey, um, an online survey that, the, that one of our vendors sent out asking for feedback on, on how they're doing things. And they did a, a random drawing from the people who completed the survey and awarded her $3,000 worth of audiobooks. Wow. So um, that came from Blackstone Audio, which is one of the vendors that we order um, the audiobooks from. So um, she went through uh, their catalog and selected 52 audiobooks, which added up to that $3,000. Those things do not come cheap. So um, we're adding those to our collection as we speak. So um, that was one of those really happy little things that saved us a, a good deal of money and enhanced our collection same time. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to hear about that we had 73 uh -huh. students or sign-ins to the tutoring mm -hmm. sessions. Yeah, we're, we're getting to the time of year that that really picks up. 
So um, we had 73 um, tutoring sessions um, for a live homework help, which is that online tutoring um, service. Uh, the other thing that's really neat about that is that um, every month in the reports where they send the statistics, they also send the student comments. And it's really, um, it's enjoyable to see those comments. They're, um, they're positive, except if there's a wait, sometimes there's a comment about that. Um, but it's, it's very clear that it's in the voices of students. <laughs> I'm just wondering, do Praising they do the any, um, does this live homework, uh, the tutor.com, do they do any testing? Is there any testing done after the tutoring sessions or anything um, like that? Meaning an see? evaluation of the? Evaluation of the students. Oh, to, to see if there's a before and an after effect. Yeah. I don't I don't think that they do. Um, they're, they're, they do a lot to protect the, the, the privacy, privacy of the students. Sure. So they try to keep things very anonymous. Mm -hmm. It's still a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of the tutors are um, our, our teachers. So um, they know that they're receiving good help from the other side That's great. of the keyboard. This is a project that we uh, proposed five, seven years ago, I forget how long Maybe ago. Maybe seven years ago? Yeah, you know, uh, as a joint project of the school district. Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> not terribly expensive, but it's expensive enough that we thought it might be a nice joint project. And uh, uh, Tutor.com has uh, indicated that they originally started their company with the idea of serving schools, but a lot of the schools didn't like the idea of the online uh, live homework help initially, and so they, they sort of started, they found that public libraries did. Uh, with that in mind, I approached, uh, you know, the former school superintendent, Jack Barshinger, and I said, what do you think about the library and the school district doing this together? And he thought that was a great idea and helped make it happen on his end. And the, the response from, because we had some positive administration support, uh, uh, that encouraged it within the school district and uh, some of the teachers and administrators have really embraced it. And it's been a really good joint project. And the use is partly, a response, is partly a result of good public relations and promotion within the school. So we're very excited about that as a joint project. So. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Stacy. There's one other thing that was on your table, <coughs> that was, you know, saving the best for last. Uh, when the uh, new edition of Trustee Facts Law came out a couple of years ago, for whatever reason, we did not get copies, which we usually do for the trustees, which uh, is a nice guide to all things uh, library trustee related. And uh, uh, in fact, it may have been because uh, we didn't recognize it was a new edition. The third edition has the exact same color scheme. <laughs> Um, so uh, I thought this looks very familiar. It, it is. It's the third edition. Looks exactly like this. So we got a copy for each uh, trustee to use while you're on the board. And uh, do you have any extra copies, George? We have a copy in the professional collection uh, downstairs. I was going to say for anybody that's considering running for the board, uh, this would be a good tool for them to look at. <coughs> Absolutely, we can we can make that available. Good. So uh, that's for your use. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 12, committee reports. Uh, facilities, Andrew, anything to report there? No, we talked about the two items that were on the consent agenda for the uh, snow removal. And as you asked, we kind of looked at how, mm -hmm. how did they break out those prices. So kind of explained it the same way you did today that uh, took different events and took their prices because they all charged different values for mobilization and for, for machine assisted and man power assisted work. So uh, broke those out pretty well, I thought. And uh, it's nice to know the local company is going to do the work. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then the uh, windmill service, it's something that, you know, as a community, we're kind of the windmill capital. So we have kind of committed to that. and. <laughs> as a community and as this organization. So these guys seem to be the, uh, the people to go to to have this repaired. So if it needs some work and it'll be a nice chance to get that cleaned up and looking nice in the back there again. It yeah, hasn't had any work done to it except for oiling for over 12 years. So it's uh, time for low maintenance. 
So yeah. it, need, it needs more than just paint. It needs, uh, yeah. it needs some mechanical. Mm -hmm. work. And the staff here does the kind of the annual maintenance on it that they can, but it's gotten to the point where it needs additional work. So I, you know, the city's doing a lot of work on their windmills too. So I think it's important that we uh, are committed to that also. So. Okay. Those are the main items, and then we we're going to have some stuff going out to bid for improvements. Bids really are, uh, will be released uh, the 24th of this month. Okay. And uh, there was actually um, an uh, uh, advertisement for bids in today's uh, King County Chronicle. So oh, good. Okay. For the process has begun. So. so, and that's for the outside repairs to the columns as we come in, uh, some of the sidewalks and uh, stonework outside. So I, I don't have the breakdown in front of me, but we'll have to get those in and get those evaluated, hopefully. But the bid's going out this time of year when there's not a lot of other work going on, the contractors will be able to sharpen their pencils, give us some nice numbers, and come the spring, we'll be able to start some of this work that we've been uh, putting on. The facilities committee will uh, act on the bids in uh, January, your January meeting, and uh, um, under the assumption that the bids are good this right. time around, uh, the board will be on the January board agenda. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Any questions about that? Okay. At 12E is the Library Foundation. Kara, anything to report there? Um, yes. So, um, yesterday evening, we were fortunate to have a good majority of the, uh, not everybody on the Foundation Board. We all got together at um, <coughs> Lynn Elam's house and addressed uh, mail and stopped them for our stay at home um, event, stay at home and read a book funding activity that we're doing. So don't um, get dressed up. Yeah, don't, don't get dressed go up, out. don't get go out, just uh, stay, at home, and read a book stay at home and read a book and enjoy yourself and send us some money. So <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's basically what we, we, you know, we were fortunate, we have a lot of, uh, we've got a few new faces on the board, which is really nice and uh, very energetic and um, looking forward to working with them. So that's about what's going on until we get started with our, our next big fundraising event. Yeah, we had 11 of uh, 12 board members there yeah. last night. So it was nice. Was nice turn. And those postcards just went out? Yeah, today. They went in today's mail. Okay. Yeah. And you can do it online, correct? Yes, the uh, the uh, web address to make donations online is, is in the uh, mailing that we just sent out. So. Yeah, and we'll be sending out more information. I mean, like, we'll be going into the <coughs> Potato Public Schools backpack, right? Right, information. the Chamber of Commerce will send out to right. uh, so we're trying uh, to notice to all the chamber members. Right, publicize that a little bit more. So, so that's what's going on with the foundation. Okay, thank you. Questions for Kara? <coughs> right. Item 12F is the Friends of the Library. Francine, anything to report there? Um, there, there was a meeting. Um, there was not much on the agenda. We talked about the upcoming uh, book sales, and um, and of course they need volunteers during the week as well. If somebody has some time to come in and um, help with. Uh, those activities getting ready for the book sales and um, they're really quite pleased with how the corner bookstore is, is selling books and it's adding to the amounts of money that the friends can um, then turn around and help our library um, to obtain things that we normally would not have been able to obtain. Um, I think that's I'll bet it, George Dwight. It was, it was a pretty light agenda. And then they, they're not meeting in November and December, but right. the work of sorting books. Uh, that will on. continue, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, any questions for Francine? All right, 12H is BATV, uh, and that's actually George. Uh, oh, it was Kara. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry, Kara. Okay. <laughs> used to be me, though. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're continuing on with uh, revising the mission statement um, for BATD and reconfiguring um, some things that are um, how the board is configured and uh, okay. that sort of thing. So okay. it's, it's looking good. We've had committee meetings and uh, we're working towards uh, a. Um, um, more effective BATV. Okay. 
Yeah, PATV spoke at uh, Rotary Club right. this morning. Oh, and, did they? Uh, gave a very nice presentation. Jim Dillenberg, the station manager, nice. was there, and uh, Jeff Matter, the vice president. Oh, yeah, of the sure, board. right. Yeah. Yep. And uh, really talking about a lot of the exciting programming, yeah. and uh, I guess the uh, they're uh, streaming uh, some of the programming in, in high definition now. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're hoping to get a high definition channel, I guess, at some point, but they don't have that now. But online might be might be ATV dot org. Mm -hmm. uh, the basketball games, for example, are being yes, done in, that's in high nice definition thing, yeah. now. So I thought that was it. They're really really being very aggressive trying yep. to improve their connection with the community, which mm -hmm. I thought was good. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Kara. And item 13, <coughs> future agenda items. We have a memo here about upcoming issues. Any questions for George about anything in here? Well, the big thing other than I want to mention, other than the, uh, the uh, exterior masonry project, the, the capital maintenance project we're working on, is uh, that January is, even though uh, we had three big years of, of abating the, the bond uh, taxes that uh, we will continue to do that every January until the bonds are retired in 2018. So we will have an ordinance in the January meeting abating the taxes. So it'll be a much smaller amount, just in the few thousands rather than the 150,000s, but, but we'll still do that. Okay, we, so we do have to uh, do an annual vote on that? Yes. That, we, okay. The way the way we did the uh, the refunding was that every November we approved the levy uh, the way the original bonds were set up for repayment, and then in January we used the refunding bonds to abate those taxes uh, every year. Right. So. Okay. Okay. And I guess now is a good time to mention that we don't have any pressing items for December sixteenth, so uh, we we can entertain any kind of discussion about uh, whether a meeting is needed or whether we should cancel. Will we need to do anything for the facilities December 16th? We won't have the bids yet, so. Okay. We'll have all that for the okay. The bids will come in in December, but and they'll evaluate them, but the board will act on them until Okay, January. thank you. Okay. All right. So I get a motion for that, Dr. Uh, because of it wasn't an, uh, an agenda, item specifically, the Old Minis Act prohibits uh, taking action, but uh, the, if there's no desire to have a meeting, Doug can uh, actually cancel it, uh, and we'll, then we'll send out notification of okay. that. Yeah, it happens once in a while, like it happened last April, I think, because of uh, some schedule issues, we, we canceled the regular meeting and rescheduled, so. Right. Okay. But you're not allowed to vote on it, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, can I mention something for the future agenda? I, just, I was just noticing that um, that there are elections coming up in April, and I'm sad to see that um, Maureen and Tom are not seeking another term. I think that's what he was alluding to when he was like, will this be available? Because hint, hint, I'm not coming back. Sad to say. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that we can get some people to come and um, sign up, get their, their uh, what are you doing? You're getting your signatures, signatures and all that kind of stuff. So what's the, yes. what's the deadline on that? Uh, between the 15th and the 22nd, I believe, is when November. November. We do, no, December. December, okay. Yeah. The so first we have day, a whole month. <coughs> yeah. The first date to file um, the nominated petitions is December 15th. But they have to be filed by the 22nd. Correct. So you've got a, a week window in which to file those. Right. Okay. okay. Andrew's running again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we have at least two open seats. So right. I mean, there's three. There are three that are up for uh, re-election. So. Right. Has anybody? Do you know George? Has anybody else picked up a path? You know, I didn't. I haven't looked. Okay. Yeah, was, I should have looked before the meeting. Mm -hmm. it, so. right. Okay. Nobody else has. Okay. Item 14, next meetings and events. <coughs> uh, and then nothing really to, to highlight there. And then item 15, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion. Okay, moved by Schuster. Second. 
second by McGuire Hoppick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you, Doug.